We've been talking about choosing sample sizes for proportions so that we can have a confidence interval with some level of confidence that is no wider than 2D. All right, so let's do an example of this to see how this works. So in this example, we want to estimate the proportion P of children who have not been adequately vaccinated against the measles. Uh, we want to have a 98% level of confidence, and we want that confidence interval to be no wider than 10 percentage points. So 10 is 2D. So we want it to be no wider than 10 percentage points. That means that in one direction, it will be 5 percentage points. We want to choose our sample size so that we can meet this goal. All right, so we can start off with our equation that we just proved. So we know that n is going to be equal to z alpha over 2 squared divided by 4d squared. All right, so first of all, if here's our standard normal, if we want to have a 98% level of confidence, so we have 0.98 in the middle here, then that means that we're going to have 0 0.01 in this tail and 0 0.01 in that tail. So when we have z alpha over 2, really, that means z.01. So if we go to r and use q norm, or if we go to a table or something like that, then we'll find out that this z.01 is equal to 2.33. All right. So we have 2.33. We can fill that in. And we know that D is equal to 5 percentage points. So in other words, 0 0.05. And then we need to square that distance. So if we crunch all those numbers, then we get we need to use a sample size of at least 543 children. All right. So we talked about how this 4 is based on p times 1 minus p of 0.05. So before we had n equals z alpha over 2 squared divided by d squared times p times 1 minus p. And again, remember we said worst case scenario, p is 0.5, and so p times 1 minus p would be um, 0.25, which is how we got the 4 down here. But sometimes, we don't need to work with the worst case scenario information. Sometimes we have maybe some preliminary results or a previous study, or maybe we have like a study on a similar population. So for example, if we're looking at like children in Ramsey County and a study has already been performed in Hennepin County, maybe we can use that um, Hennepin County proportion as a rough guess for our Ramsey County proportion in order to calculate the sample size. So, if we have like a decent guess, then instead of using p equals 0.5, we can use our decent guess. So if we call our decent guess p star, then we can get a new sample size, and that sample size will definitely be smaller than the sample size under our worst case scenario of using p of 0.5. So this is useful because obviously if we have a smaller sample size, it's going to take less time. It's going to cost less money because we have a smaller sample. Um, it'll just make things easier. So if we have some good guess, then we should go ahead and use that. So say in this example, we have um, information that P is no bigger than 0.2. Then we can use that. So now under this new worst case scenario, our proportion is that we're going to use is 0.2. So we're going to use p star of 0.2. So then we can go ahead and crunch all these numbers again. So we still have z alpha over 2 being 2.33. We have d squared still being 0.05 squared. And then now we have 0.2 times 1 minus 0.2. And so we get n being 348. All right, so we can see that when we had this little bit of information, it was very useful for reducing our sample size. So instead of having to sample 543 people, we can sample almost 200 
children less. So that's going to make um, our study a lot cheaper and a little bit faster too.